One of the things you've been doing on the channel a good bit this year in MLB The Show 21 is breaking down gameplays, breaking down top players' gameplay and the things that they do at the plate to separate themselves from everyone else. However, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing something a little different from that. We're going to break down someone's gameplay who is not a top player, and we're going to basically break down, offer insight for improvement, and kind of coach through a gameplay here and offer my advice because a lot of the same issues occur between many players. A lot of people do the same things wrong. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and break down certain points of gameplay and try to offer some good advice. So the person's gameplay we're going to be looking at today is my bud Clutch. He does YouTube videos. He streams on Twitch. I'm going to put the link to all of his socials down there. He's a cool dude. And he's been really trying to get better at the game. But what we're going to do today, he sent me over a gameplay. And we're basically going to watch it together. We're going to break down some of the key points of this game and how I would be strategizing and approaching each situation and offering more insight and advice on how we could improve playing against some people in ranked seasons. So first of all, we're going to take a look at his team and see if there's any room to improve the lineup. He's got an all switch hitter bench, and I don't know if that's intentional or not. But other than that, the, the team looks pretty nice. He's got Babe, Griffey, and Julio. I know he's a Mariners fan, so that Julio Rodriguez is very nasty. I think the team looks solid. Um, In terms of the lineup in the order, he's got righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, righty, lefty, righty. At this point in the game there's no real right or wrong answers with your lineup as long as you have like a general gauge of how you do with each player you know who is your best players on your teams so you choose who's best for you all right so it's the top of the first inning the game is just starting he is facing Walker Bueller, who is definitely a little bit of an underused pitcher. What we're going to use the first inning for normally is to get a read on how you're being attacked. What pitches do they like to go to? The, for many people, if you're someone who's especially lower in ranked and you're just trying to get a gauge of your opponent, I wouldn't take until two strikes, but I would really minimize your zone to start the game Start off just looking for pitches you are ready to hit. Tatis does a good job of hitting the inside pitch. He's got a quick swing. I would be sitting inside fastball, and I'd only try to swing at any sort of inside fastball, especially early on in the count. Um, but at least you want to get a gauge of how he's attacking you. He's gone to the down the way slider twice in a row this event, so you know that's a pitch he likes to go to to get outs against righties. So there's a good job of working a full count, seeing a lot of pitches his first at bat. What pitch does he go to in a 3-2 count? Down away slider. He threw that down away slider three times at a bat. Um, that would be a first tell of me that he's going to go that down away slider a lot. Inside sinker. Inside cutter. But he's going to the inside fastball type pitches to a lefty. Staying inside from the looks of it. A down and in slider. Again, two strikes going to the slider. It seems like he is attacking the zone with the fastballs early on in the at bat, then going to that slider in the two strike count. Good swing, turning on an inside fastball. Good, 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 love it, love it. See, he's sitting dead right inside fastball, it's a good cut. Picking up on your opponent and how they are attacking you. You're not gonna stick to the exact same pitch sequence every time, but you wanna pick up on the general trends. He went inside, then outside with the slider and then back inside with a fastball. It seems like he only he doesn't want to throw those fastballs away. Most of the fastballs, the sinkers, the cutters, the four seams have been on the inside part of the play on the right side to a lefty or the left side to a righty. So what I would be doing, I would be sitting inside fastballs early on in the at bat, trying to ambush him, swing a little aggressively, maybe not in the first inning here, but as you move on to this game, I would be sitting inside on a fastball. That's a dot right there. That's tough to hit. How do you attack him? If you're starting off a game, how are you going to attack your opponent to start off this game? Um, that's a good gauge right there. He throws a low curveball. His opponent swings first pitch. Seems like his opponent may have a tough time reading the low part below the zone to start off this game. If I'm going to throw breaking balls, I'm going to try to throw them low, but near the heart of the plate. You could probably stick to the corners and get a lot of iffy swings. Get some late swings in the inside part of the plate if you go to the sinkers or cutters. And probably get some, some freezes on pitches that start outside the zone and come back in. He seems very iffy on the edges of the zone. But also, you could probably go above or below the zone and get some good swings and misses. See, he's late on that cutter because he thought that was going to be inside. He's not ready for that fastball. There's that inside sinker trying to go to that inside fastball. He's going to definitely either throw it down the way slider or an inside fastball. Yep, went to the inside fastball. Now it's an 0-2 count. 
What's the pitch he's going to go to? Probably, in a way, breaking ball. A pitch that moves away from the hitter. Went to the cutter instead of the slider, but he gets a solid contact on that. This will be a two-bagger. You can sit and mentally prepare for those pitches early on in the at-bat and wait for it. I would be starting my PCI right here, waiting for that inside sinker or cutter or four seam like he's been throwing. Yep, first pitch inside cutter. This guy is, whether intentionally or unintentionally, throwing a lot of these pitches over the heart of the plate. So he's getting pitches to hit. I would start my PCI inside here. You're gonna. This is the part of the game where you're gonna really see if your opponent attacks you differently. I would stick to that early approach that we think like what pitch is he gonna go to to get an out. He's trying to dot the sinker. He's trying to throw that slider. I bet he goes like an inside sinker, cutter, or slider here. See, like in this scenario, you got the eight batter coming up next, and he's a righty. I wouldn't be giving him an easy pitch to hit here, but his opponent is. He's gonna attack the zone. That right there is an indicator. He's gonna throw something in the zone here. Ooh, missed a spot there. He's getting a read of that slider now. Great check swing. Again, sitting inside fastball. Ooh, don't want to, don't want to swing at that first. If you're mentally sitting on an inside fastball, then you just mentally eliminate that pitch first pitch. And now you just gave him a little bit of a step up in this at bat. Inside fastball, I'm waiting for it. Ooh, see, he was slightly late on it. Ooh. What happened there is that first check swing probably messed with him that at bat. He, his approach was just thrown out for a loop <laughs> in that at bat. That'll happen. That'll happen. Inside fastballs. Waiting on the inside fastball. Gets it away. One good adjustment. Ready to get that PCI out there. There's that down in slider again. He got him to strike out on that pitch last AB. I'm just keeping my PCI inside here. I am ready for the inside pitch. Looking to turn and burn on a pitch. If I'm clutch, the main thing is where I'm starting the PCI. A big thing that a lot of people can do is just start your PCI in a dedicated part of zone where they think they're going to be pitched. And he threw inside that entire at bat. So I like starting the PCI inside, waiting for that type of pitch. I like to start the PCI kind of where I can expect the pitch, at least on the side of the plate where I expect the pitch is going to come. Helps a ton. Oh, did he time that? Did he do it? Ooh, he's now changing from inside to outside, but still you can see he's attacking early on in the at bat with those sinkers. That's exactly what I was saying before. It's a great shot to ambush them, swing early on in the at bat and be ready for those pitches because those are gonna be some of your best pitches to hit. So yeah, he's absolutely dealing on the mound, hasn't even given up a hit. So let's just try to look at the pitching approach. Big thing I'm looking at with pitching, I'm looking at my opponent's PCI placement, his swing timing. And even though it isn't always accurate, I'm trying to get a gauge of what my opponent is sitting on. That is the number one thing I'm doing. His opponent has not timed many fastball type pitches. He's laid on a lot of those, especially when they're located well on the corners. And I'm going to keep on going to those pitches over and over again until he proves to time them. Those sliders, risky pitches. He has just missed a few of those sliders. Whenever he hangs it, those are the pitches he's hitting the best. I'm doing almost like what his opponent's doing on the mound, but I'm going to attack in the zone early. I'm going to throw those sinkers, those cutters on the corners just like that. The opponent hasn't timed up any of them well. I'm going to stick to those. Throw in those breaking balls here and there, way out of the zone. Not even throw them close, because those are the pitches he's timing the best. He's almost like he's sitting on the breaking balls. There it is. He's going to... Now his opponent's cheat. See, now... This is what I mean. We got to try to pick up on our opponent and how they are attacking us. What pitches is our opponent going to go to early on in the at-bat? He scored three runs. He's scared to throw in the zone early on in the at-bat with that fastball. So he's he's thrown four straight at-bats where he's gone to a knuckle curve or a slider first pitch. Doesn't mean you swing at it, but now you know how he's approaching you. He's going to that pitch. Try to get you to get an early rollover swing. Instead of giving you that fastball, he, he realized that he is adjusting and hitting those fastballs. Well, I would still stick to sitting on our fastballs, those sliders, knuckle curves. He's going to have a tough time dotting that. There's zero reason to swing at that early on in the at-bat unless they are absolute hangers that end up in the zone. He just missed that. But again, his PCI has been over the heart of the plate a good bit this game. I would be just starting my PCI at that part of the plate. 
This poor guy he's playing is late on every fastball. He's late on every fastball. Oh my God, they were early on a fastball. Okay, now you start to adjust. This man just dialed up for a fastball right there. Not that you, you entirely stray from it, but you gotta really take note when they finally do time up a fastball. Now you change it up. Now his opponent timed one up. I'm going to more breaking stuff in that at bat. Try to get his timing over the place again. Inside fastballs, he's going back to that beginning of the game approach. This guy seems to have one of two approaches with pitching. Early on the count, he's either going to try to get ahead of the count by throwing a down and away breaking ball, either dotting it or getting a, an early swing. We're going to the inside fastballs. So let's see, what's he go to first pitch? Inside fastball. He did put up good swings, just a, an un, unlucky ground out line out there. He's putting up good swings, man. Early count fastballs, attack the zone, but I'm aiming a little bit more in the black. He's aiming it over the heart of the plate a little bit here. The late contact inside is going to result in more swings and misses and broken bats. See, this is what we were, this is what I was saying about how, like, be careful with those fastballs a bit. Because he's starting to time them up a bit. You got to get his timing a little bit more over the place. That is a good swing. But you got to really aim on the black with these pitches early on the at bat. Really lock in. He's spinning on those low break balls. Now he knows he's got to be sitting fastball here. Yup. I think he realized he went to those low breaking balls too much. Sometimes you got to throw it in the zone. Sometimes when you're ahead in the count, it's easy to waste all of those pitches, try to get a swing and miss. But sometimes when you throw a low breaking ball outside the zone, sometimes you got to come back into the zone in a two strike count. Even if you're ahead of the count, try to induce some weak contact, mess with their timing a bit. That's a good swing. He timed up one of those sliders. Atta boy. That's what we need. Making those adjustments. And again, that, that down and in slider. That's his go-to pitch. He throws it just near the zone. Oh, he wanted that. He just missed that PCI. Again, I think some of these missed PCIs comes down to starting your PCI somewhere. He's starting his PCI away. Not that it's not working out for him this game, but he could have likely had a better PCI on some of these inside pitches if he starts his PCI inside. You can tell he's waiting on those pitches. His opponent really likes that slider. That's He's probably thrown that pitch 50 times this game. That's all you have to do with this type of guy. Wow. First pitch swinging at a hanging 12-6. I like it. I like it. Inside fastball. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. If someone throws two breaking balls out of the zone to you like that, that's likely setting up for them to come back in the zone with a fastball. So I, I, I was definitely another typical thing his opponent went to there. Poor clutch. Poor clutch. Ooh, who's he going to? He didn't warm up the pen. Oh, load. Don't go, Class A. All right, this is gonna get spooky. With Class A, he's essentially a two pitch pitcher, unfortunately. You can get him on the outlier if you're playing so. I mean, actually, it's not a bad move because the opponent's consistently late on outlier. Um, but I am definitely mostly going cutter slider. Those are the two pitches. That's a good pitch right there. Dot. Um, slider. Slider away. Slider away out of the zone. No. Oh, he's sitting on that fastball. He's sitting on that fastball. It's so easy to hit, even though outlier, the outlier cutter is solid. It's essentially the same as his four seam. Doesn't have that much break. Throwing the, the slider and cutters away to righties, off the plate inside the lefties. This is a good pitch. Ooh, he missed his spot. Breaking balls, don't hang those. He's been all over those all games. There's anything this opponent does well, he hits the hanging breaking ball. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Ooh, I can't believe he missed that. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Good decision. Still better matchup, giving him a different look. He hasn't faced his lefty like this all game. The across the body sliders are a big deal for Miller. With how he releases the ball, that slider seems like it has more movement because he throws across his body. That's a beautiful pitch. Beautiful pitch. Nice. And a boy clutch. Good work. What are the key things you should be taking note of, whether you're clutch? or you're someone who is this in ranked season's player, reading into your opponent and how they are attacking you. I, what we had talked about here, we broke down his opponent and how he attacked him basically in the first inning. The first inning, we had a read on how his opponent attacked him early on in the count, 
two strike counts. And Clutch did make some adjustments. He put up some good swings on fastballs early on in the count, which is good. Then his opponent changed to something else, and I was able to pick up on it after an inning. He had one inning where he did that, and he's kept on sticking with it. But he would still go back to that original approach, going to those early count fastballs inside over and over and over again. Use those first couple innings to try to pick up on how your opponent attacks you. Minimize your hitting approach early on in the game. Sit on a part of the zone like inside fastballs. It's a good general strategy. Sit on an inside fastball. Mentally tell yourself to swing at an inside fastball and that'll be the only pitch you swing at until a two strike count. Early on in the game, if you're confident enough as a hitter, I would sit inside fastballs. Try to pick up though on how your opponent is pitching you. Try to see some pitches. If it's not in that part of the zone, whatever part of the zone you want to sit on, don't swing. See some pitches. Try to pick up on the patterns, whether you're using it in-game like this, where you go to the pitcher analysis and the pause menu. If he was in a call with me and I was telling him, hey, he's doing this, this, and this, he probably could have scored 10 runs off this guy because he just missed a few swings. Another thing, if you are mentally preparing and sitting on a pitch, especially early on in the count and you, you do have free reign and what pitches you could swing at, you have strikes to give. I would start my PCI in the part of the zone you're waiting for. If you're someone who's waiting for a high fastball, if you're waiting for an inside fastball, I'm starting my PCI in that spot for the pitch I'm mentally waiting on. And on the reverse with pitching, pick up on what your opponent is doing at the plate. If they're consistently laid on fastballs, keep on giving them those fastballs as a majority of your pitch, especially early on in the at bat, until they prove that they are waiting for that fastball. If your opponent starts to get an early swing or a good timing swing on those fastballs, especially if they're inside of the zone, that means they're prepared for those fastballs at least a little bit, whether they're selling out on that pitch or they are just prepared to time it. At that point, then you start to mix in more of the breaking stuff. Get them a little bit early on the breaking ball. Do a lot of pitches over the plate here, here, when you could just wait a little bit and aim on the black and even aim a little bit outside and you'll get a lot of the same effect. And just take your time pitching. There's no rush. Try to locate right on the corners whenever you can. That's part of the reason I like pitching from a behind the hitter view because I see the zone more zoomed in. I can aim a little bit more precisely. And when you're looking from the pitcher perspective, the zone is so small. The, the tendency to aim like here and here is a lot more probable and you kind of want to do that but yeah that is gonna be it if you guys enjoyed this type of breakdown and these type of tips helped you make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below we're gonna be doing this i think throughout the, the latter part of the year breaking down some gameplay providing some good insight on tips style and giving individual tips on these situation and make sure you come swing by the stream come hang out i do play a lot of mlb the show on stream so if you have any questions want to hear any feedback you want to watch me play the game more make sure you swing by the twitch twitch.tv slash scan that's gonna be it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you all again on the next one deuces